Thank you very much, Zakia, for that beautiful song. So Carl, who was Carl? We all know Carl. When we think of Carl, we smile. It's a laugh, it's a guffaw. It's something light and happy and, and, and positive. That's how I know that many of us will remember him. Carl, he was an action man. This is a tribute from his friend, Leah Brown in England. He was an action man, lover of fun, cars, party, rally, sports, carnival. If there was one person that you know would be at the event, it would have been Carl. He was a social butterfly, always friendly, and greeted you with a smile. A networker. His laugh was distinctive, loud, and raucous. He could be found in friendly banter about sports among the crew. He was dependable a problem solver, used to stay calm and used to say calm down or take it easy. We got this. Always willing to come to your assistance. Stopping by him on Kudubant Day was a must. Left plenty of headpieces there. Or used it as a meeting point to finish get ready for the road. 
and that was from Leah, how Carl was remembered. At this time, I invite Corey Daniel, friend of Carl, to give his tribute. Good afternoon, everyone. It has been extremely hard for me to say the words goodbye, my friend. And to understand that, within life as we know it, these words are final. The last three weeks have been exceedingly tough, one of the roughest periods of my life. I cannot recall another time that I have ever cried and hurt so much. I would have never thought that I would be saying goodbye to one of my dearest friends at this juncture of our lives. I saw all of us living until we were old, playing with and helping to raise our grandkids. But once more, the world has lost someone great too soon. Someone whose presence made a difference every day to many. I love you, Carol, and I will miss you always, my friend. Over and over in my head, I have had so much to say, so many words and phrases that I have repeated time and time again. But on that occasion, on the occasion that I sit to write them, they all fail me. Therefore, I will just uh, talk, just talk about the great man that I knew and grew up with. I will forever call my friend. Carol and I and our other friends grew up in Station Hill together. Some of these guys were Walter, Tony, and Kevin. Kevin better known as Yah, just to name a few. Carol and I went to different primary schools. He attended the Wesley Hall Boys School and I attended the Robert Primary and the Lawrence Tegan Memorial School. As most persons would know, we then both attended the University of Waterford, better known as Combermere. For a portion of our secondary school life, we walked to school together every morning. In the early days, it would be Carl, Andrea, and myself, and on other occasions, it would be Carl, Tanya, and myself. During those times, Carl was the smallest among us, and my grandmother affectionately gave him the nickname Pip Squeak, a nickname that stuck for a while, at least until puberty hit. In our teenage years, Carol and I and our friends spent lots of time together, either up by me or by his house. During these years, we all became like one big family, with Carol lovingly calling my mother Jo and calling my grandparents by the same name that we all call them, old boy and old girl. I affectionately called his mother mum or mums and loved her as if she was. My mother treated Carol as if he were her son and at times acted just as if that was the case. Within this period of time in our lives, it felt like if we did everything together. Down by Carol or Walter, we would play video games. Through Carol's gap, we would play road tennis, cricket, hockey, or skateboard in the road. Up by me, we would play cricket or road tennis with my grandfather and our friends. We watched videotapes until all hours of the night. One night, we played dominoes from just after 7 p.m. until the sun came up the next morning. We went everywhere together. Every Sunday, it was a ritual to go to the beach after Sunday lunch. During summer vacations, we went fishing. On one of those fishing expeditions, both Carl and Ryan Fox fell into the swamp. These were definitely some fun times. As it got later into our teenage years, one of our friends, Dean, erected a basketball ring right next to Carl's house. And from that time, it became the evening ritual to play basketball with Carol each and every single day. As we all got into basketball more and more, we would go to watch Station Hill Men's and Women's teams play at the YMCA and at the gymnasium. On one of those occasions when we went to watch the basketball at the gymnasium, we, went, we ended up stranded and could not get a van to get home. That night we walked home and took turns carrying the ladies that were in our group on our backs for part of the way. Then there were the cinema outings to watch Kung Fu movies and the bus rides to the shop up by Sam Lawrence Castle to eat. Right after eating was the run across the long gap to catch the last bus. 
Also, the bus race to Spike Stone and the missing of the last bus from Spike Stone. Tony, I remember all the guys going on the bus ride one night to Spike Stone. This time, we did not miss the last bus to go home. That night, I fell asleep on the bus. And the wonderful friends that I have, including Carol, of course, made a pact with the driver to wait me at the next stop while the rest of them got off at our usual stop. Nonetheless, I woke up just as the bus was moving off from our stop and shouted to the driver to stop. Those brutes laughed at me all the way home. Carol and I are born nine days apart. I am October 1st, and he shares the same birthday with my youngest uncle of October 10th. We would always celebrate our birthdays together in some form or fashion, and we would also continue to celebrate the entire month. So much so that we had our 16th birthday party together at his house, or shall I say in his yacht, because it more turned out to be a street party than a house party. That month, we also had a birthday fest at September's nightclub, a gift from my mother to us. Birthdays were not the only time of the year that were dear to us, but Christmas as well. We all celebrated Christmas to the fullest, but Carol made it unforgettable for one simple reason. Carol started a tradition that we all joined on to and made sure to practice for some time after that. One Christmas day, Carol turned up at my house, but he did not turn up empty-handed, nor did he turn up with any gifts or any food. Carol turned up with his knife and fork and sat down. My mother just looked at him and could not stop laughing. Afterwards, she made sure to give him what he came for. After Carol was finished, he cleaned his knife and fork and then went from one house to the next of all of our close friends for the remainder of the day with the same agenda. From that year and for some years after that, we all followed his lead and did the same. Carol and I left Combermere the same year and started at UWA Camp Hill the same year as well, 1995. We pursued different areas of study, but nonetheless, would still hook up whenever we could, especially on Friday nights at the Guild. Carol would go on to finish his degree and graduate in 1999. I, on the other hand, tried my hand at being a man early and fathered my first child on October 8, 1997, two days before Carol's birthday. Ashley, a baby then, but now a young lady, who coincidentally graduated from university 20 years later after her godfather, Uncle Carol, in 2019, and now works and lives in the USA. After Ashley was born, it quickly became time to ask persons if they would stand the responsibility of being a godparent. The very first person that came to my mind was Carl. When they think of Carl, he possessed all the qualities of a person that I would want to be a vital part of my child's life. So much so that I asked him to do it twice, 10 years later. He then became the godparent of my second daughter, Amanda Daniel, who coincidentally is also born in October on the 22nd. <laughs> 2007, 12 days after Carol's birthday. Carol was an active godfather in both of his goddaughter's lives, especially in Ashley's. When she was younger, he visited often when we were in Station Hill and would also visit by her mom as well. He came to her basketball games, would also pick her up from basketball on the occasion when I could not make it. He remembered every birthday and every Christmas and left a definite impression in her life. He loved his goddaughters and they loved him. Both girls like I do will miss him dearly. All of your godchildren will miss you dearly, and every child whose life has been impacted, especially your son, Jaden. My friend Carol, the go-getter, the overachiever, the self-motivated, the motivator of others, the never-give-up guy in the room, the guy who saw the positive in everything and who would fight the negative, the guy who argued his points to the end, the big brother, the friend, the godfather, the father, the devoted partner. The guy who won the girl that we both liked when we were teenagers. That is the guy that I know and no other guy. That is the guy who I will remember for the rest of my life. That is the guy who has left an indelible impression upon my life, our friends' lives, and the lives of many. Mr. Carl Carlo Wave, the cool guy. A short while ago, I was angry and upset, sad and in disbelief. I called Tony O'Leary when he told me the news on that fateful Sunday, July 5th, a day that I would like to forget, but shall never as long as I live. I called Walter right after and I spoke to Tony, and I cried bitterly while trying to tell him the news. Walter said no and could not believe it. 
To this day, I still fight within myself, but I am angry no more. To my friends forever, Anthony Tony Lynch, Maurice Walter Harris, and Kevin Yaya Watts, please know that each and every one of us is here for one another, and that as we, as men, we need to show that we are there for each other. No burden is too large to share, no help or assistance is too small to give or to accept. We as men and as friends can do better and must do better. Today I give you all some instructions in the form of a poem titled Times Like These. When things get tough, pick up the phone and call. If something is rough, come over to my house and fall. Never ever think that you are alone. Always know that you are most welcome to forever come home. Wherever your friends are is always a good place to be. Somewhere helpful, caring, secure, and mighty. A place that will bring comfort, joy, and a helping hand to assist you with your troubles as you remain a man. There is no shame or embarrassment in saying that I am weak or in being seen as a person who is very meek. For most of all, we'll have at least one moment when the image delivered differs greatly from the image sent. Thank you. A tribute from his one of his goddaughters, Ashley Daniel, who couldn't be here. Uncle Carl.
the man of random messages that could brighten up my day in an instant. You always brought a light into any room you walked in. Though I was unable to see you through the last couple years, your presence was never absent. Though you are no longer with us, you shall always be with me, bringing random smiles to my day each time I think of you. I will miss you. We will all miss you. We shall carry on the light you brought to the world. Rest easy. Ashley Daniel, Goddaughter. Next trip you do is from friend Natalie Dial. For me, Carl was a big brother. He was one that knew when to encourage me to make a bold move and was an excellent hype man. Some of the best memories of Carl sees him playing different roles. Protector, defender, brother, joker, friend, mentor, advisor. So many words to describe such a wonderful person, a great person Carl was. At this time, I'll invite Mr. Sean Lewis to give his tribute on behalf of Carl's Auntie Jackie. Good afternoon. This tribute is on behalf of Mrs. Jacqueline Seals, affectionately known to Carl as Auntie Jackie. I have many fond memories of Carl. There is so much we could talk about. Carl became one of my sons the day he came home with Corey during their school days at Combe Mira. From my first impression, it was clear that he was such a loving and caring person. I had a front row seat in watching and caring for a group of genuine friends, those from school days, who grew up to become the men they are today. Over the past years, Carol would look forward to his visits to Miami. Our house was his home away from home. As recently as last month, he called me to discuss how much he missed his Miami family and the fact that he could not visit due to his obligations and the impacts of COVID-19 in Barbados. Otherwise, he would have been there at least two times this year. One of my fondest memories was on one of his visits when he attended a birthday party at the Barbados Consulate General's home. He had such a great time that on our way home at 4 a.m. in the morning, he couldn't stop shouting, Auntie Jackie, Auntie Jackie, this is the way to live. He had such a beautiful spirit. I miss him so much already. I could count on Carl for anything. I expect that this will be a consistent theme in the tributes that are spoken of him now and forever. From assembling chairs for me while in, on his vacation, without me even having to ask, to ensuring that I never had any transportation issues when coming home to Barbados. And of course, to sharing in our friendship and family over a celebratory drink. Carl, you will always have a special place in my heart and my home. You will be missed dearly. Gone too soon, rest in peace, son. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean, for your tribute on behalf of Auntie Jackie. At this time, as we do have the time, I'd like to open up to one or two tributes, short tributes from the audience, if anybody would like to, to, to share their experience with Carl. 
My experience, I met Carl, well, I am a Commemorian, but I'm not in his year. I met Carl officially in 2007, myself, Tricia, Leah, and I think Nat, we were at World Cup 2007 at Kensington Oval, and we were liming. And we saw a group of common mirror guys, and we said hi. Um, you know, the group knew each other, and that was it. That was it. That was 13 years ago. I admire Carl for the way that he, the role that he played in Tricia's life. The role that he played as Jaden's dad. And uh, that's, my, that's my take home for Carl. That's, that's the way he wins for me. Any tributes from the audience? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I guess I don't have to say I'm a Kamamirian, because that's kind of obvious. Um, but Carl and I and David Mears had a very special bond. Um, we were Kamamirians, we were hockey players, and we worked at Fujitsu. And those IT people will understand that in IT, you create a very special bond. Um, and while I didn't necessarily work at Fujitsu at the same time that he did, uh, the company itself had a spirit that we all shared. So we would play hockey, and after hockey, David, Carl, and I, after practice, whatever, would talk IT, much to the dismay of some of the other team members. Um, but I, when I spoke to David, David couldn't be here. Um, he's in the US. When I spoke to him, uh, on the weekend, last weekend, David said, you know, Carl was the life of Fujitsu. If anyone had to rally up Fujitsu to do work, anyone that knows IT usually knows we do our work in the wee hours in the morning. And he said no matter what time he asked Carl to come out, 3 o'clock a.m., 4 a.m., 11 p.m., Carl was there, upbeat, I'm ready to go. That is who Carl Wave was. And that is how I would remember and how David remembers Carl. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else would like to give a tribute to Carl? Life of the party. That is how he's remembered. Protector, defender, brother, joker, friend, mentor, advisor are just some of the words used to describe Carl. Any other tributes from the audience? Okay, thank you. How do I
just to quote something that he always said, happiness is a destination. It, a ha happiness is not a destination. It's a journey. Rest in peace, Carl. We prepare for the beginning of the funeral.
So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised. In his great mercy, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, he gave us new birth into a living hope, the hope of inheritance reserved in heaven, which nothing can destroy or spoil or wither. The eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms of Almighty God. As a mother comforter her child, so I will comfort your sea, the Lord. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and he will carry them in his bosom. We will not have you ignorant, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. This is the assurance we have from the God who was, who is, and who is to come. And the people of God say, Amen. My family in Christ, we continue this service of thanksgiving as we stand to lift up our voices in this hymn of faith. Amazing grace, how sweet the song that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Shining as the sun. Shining as the sun. 
We've no less days to sing God's praise. Than when we first began. We're going to add one final verse. And this verse declares praise God, praise God, praise God. Let the church praise God, praise God, praise God. And that's all we sing. Praise God, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God. We are standing in this place, but we are burdened. We are standing in this place and there are myriad of emotions and feelings that persons are going through. There are even persons, Lord, who are streaming this service and they're torn, wishing that they could be here. God, there are more questions than answers. There's anger and there's pain. There's sadness and sorrow, regret, and a whole bunch of other stuff, God, that perhaps we're not even sure exactly how we feel. But God, we look to you because you are our refuge and our strength. You are a very present help in moments such like this. And God, I pray that you would hold us in the hollow of your hand. That you would speak to us of things eternal. That you would comfort, strengthen. And somehow, God, in the midst of everything that we are feeling and all that we are going through, you will point us to the cross of Calvary. God, you remind us that you are indeed a bigger than our mountains and bigger than our fears. And that when our hearts are overwhelmed, that you are indeed the rock that is higher than I. And so God, I pray that you would take full control of this moment. That your Holy Spirit, God, will indeed tabernacle with all. And that God, where human words may indeed fail, God, you never fail. Our eyes are on you. Our hearts are yet humbled and open. And God, we say, have your divine way. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to remain standing as we lift up our voices, looking to find comfort in those hymns and songs that often point us to that which is bigger than us. Our psalmist voices lead us even now as we sing, Hide me now, endure your wing. Cover me within your mighty hand. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. And there are times when we just have to be still and know that he is God. We lift up our voices as we sing.
be seated in the house of God. We have assembled and gathered my family in Christ for this service of thanksgiving. Permit me a few moments just to welcome and to recognize a number of persons who are present in our midst. First, want to recognize the Honorable Minister, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, Minister of Health and Wellness, Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Jeanette Phillips, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Cheryl Aline, the Chief Health Planner, Mrs. Rashima Sheltamham Niles, Deputy Chief Public Health Nurse, one of our very own Norma Folks Bino, Dr. Anton Best, the Senior Medical Officer, and all the persons from the Ministry of Health, all the senior staff, and all those persons who are here. I want to recognize all of the pastors, apostles, prophets, prophetesses, bishops, and church leaders that may be under the sound of my voice. I honor you and thank God that you are serving in God's kingdom, and thank you for being here. I want to welcome and recognize all my fellow Commemorians in the sanctuary and watching up and on. Want to recognize, welcome, and continue to ask you to lift up in prayer Trisha, Jaden, Sister Pat, Craig, and all the family, immediate family, and those close friends of Carl. We want to welcome and recognize those persons who are streaming this service live via the Calvary Moravian Church Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Those who may have started a watch party of some sort and those who are watching, those who are standing on the outside under the tents to one and all, good afternoon. It is my prayer that in this service of Thanksgiving that we experience and encounter the living God that we know that we have a God who is with us and for us for moments such as this, and that even though we may be weak, even though we are wrestling, even though we are still struggling, God is still for us. Our service will therefore continue. Good afternoon, my family in Christ. Leading your service this afternoon is Reverend Dawar Burley, Associate Pastor of the Calvary Moravian Church. At this time, we will have a tribute which will be done by a group called The Facts. At this time, I invite them to come forward as we listen to them as they give a tribute. Carl Wehman, Carlo, Carlo Perfecto, my brother, our friend. We've all met him in different stages along this journey. But no matter how long or short the time he spent with him, we all saw him as a friend. My first memory of Carol was my first day at primary school. My dad looking for a quick escape <laughs> from having to deal with me crying, daddy don't go. I remember him looking around and seeing Carol, who lived very close to my grandmother, shouting to Carl, literally just handing me to Carol, and saying, Carol, take the boy to Miss Lynch class. 
clearly I knew who he was as I went along. We've been friends and brothers since then. When Carol and Ryan Williams sat the common entrance and passed for common mirror, as they were a level ahead of me, I prepared only to see them during summer, if at all. As fate would have it, I passed the common mirror and our friendship continued. As we grew older, early teens, Carol and myself, Ryan, Corey Daniel, spent countless hours by Walter Harris, <laughs> who lived at the top of Carol's Gap, or we would be by Carol playing Nintendo for hours. My dad would tell my grandmother, don't go any people place too early <laughs> and come back at lunch. I never got back home till I knew my dad would be coming for me. We would eat cereal snacks by Walter all day. Some days when Carl's mom would cook, we would eat there, and we would play video games all day for years. <laughs> Carol clearly got his open, friendly, caring nature from his mother. Mrs. Wave would always meet you at the door with a good morning and a smile. From early teens, I watched Carol look out for Ryan Mears, his neighbor, like a little brother. Carol was his, his big brother, his mentor, almost like a father figure. And Ryan could not be left out with the games either. Even those days when we had some heated battles, once it was Ryan's turn, Carol made sure he played, even if he gave it his turn. Carol was the poster boy for selflessness. Selflessness. He's always been a person that any of us could count on for anything. If you made a mistake and say you needed help with anything, that would set a plan in motion that could not be reversed. There was no confidence in Carol that he might be overextending himself. He started response would be, wait, my man, my lady, I ain't asked you all that. Take it easy. I will get it done. I can still hear him telling Ryan's mom, this is Ryan Williams, who he took on as his own. Mumsy, don't worry, I got it covered. I come here reformed lifelong friendships with the facts. We really got that name at UE, but that's a story for another time. Carlo was the glue in the facts, the absolute glue. Held everything together. The go to guy, Mr. Dependable. Mr. Always had a link. Always knew somebody that could do something. So we left it to Carlo. Carlo was a closer and he never disappointed. He always knew a guy who could make things happen. And in many respects for us, he was that guy. He had the ability to make everyone around him feel special, like they mattered. Later, we worth the effort. You couldn't introduce him to anyone, and by the next meeting, Carol found some way to befriend him. Sometimes, a new friendship was deeper than the one you had with that person. He was the most personable person I have ever known. Carol had a presence like no other to me, and could take over the energy in a room, a meeting, a party with ease. In all the time that we knew each other, I can't say the three of us ever had an argument or a disagreement. Mostly because if you try to make a point, Carol went in the jet, my man, let me land. <laughs> it usually ended with the point being made and a swift ending to the conversation. <laughs> Through the 40 years that we've been friends, we've gone to every school together right at the university. Fish and Carol work together, part, we all party together, share each other's clothes, travel, been there for each other, confident brother. We played sports on the same teams. Ryan and Carol even teamed up in our early teen years as badminton partners. <laughs> Decades later, they were both about being the number three seed in the island, being narrowly beaten by, ironically, myself and Mr. Smith, Ian Smith. 
The accolade they assigned themselves may have been slightly exaggerated, but they made it stick. As we grew into our adult years, Carol was the epitome of work hard, play hard. Hence our many trips to Carnival, especially Trinidad Carnival. That became our yearly vacation as a group. Especially when Ryan moved to Cayman, we used this link at Carnival to catch up. There would usually be a day we'd sit and talk about everything under the sun. I really look forward to those days at Carnival more so than effects, to be honest. Nobody's gonna believe that. But we'll definitely miss that. When it came to Carnival, Carlo had everything covered. Accommodation, transportation, fat tickets. We just showed up and paid him. He was a Carnival Superman. And no one would be left behind. Even outside our group, everyone had to have a good time. And Carlo knew how to have a good time. We shared ups and downs, highs and lows. The one thing that I can say is that his heart was big and pure. He carried it on his sleeve and shared it with anyone who needed it. Carol Fish and I shared a close bond from childhood, which extended to include the wider group once we got to secondary school. Nonetheless, an unbreakable unit of 15 guys bound together by a true friendship. The group that we now call the VAPS evolved simply out of a close-knit group of friends gravitating to a room at UE during our spare time, and to be fair, during class time. It was a computer lab. Nothing special. The majority of us really had no business being there, but we followed Carl there to hang out and play Snake. <laughs> In many ways, he brought us together and kept us together. Carl saw all of us as family, and somehow he was able to carve out enough time in a day to show up for every single one of us. Somehow he was able to stay in contact and present at all times. He remembered every single birthday and anniversary, which oftentimes would show our own deficiency in that area. He loved his family first and foremost. He loved Tricia and Jalen unconditionally. He loved his godchildren immensely and equally. He loved his friends. He loved people. People loved him. Testimony to the heart of the man. I have experienced many firsts with my guy. First day at school. First one to show me a hockey stick. First rail barber. That wasn't my dad's barber. First crop over. First carnival. First time driving a car. The list is long. And now the first of us to go to heaven. I remember Carlo in my way. And I urge you here to do the same. Rest easy, Carlo. Till we meet again. <clears throat> The following is only a sample of the tributes from the members of the VAPs. In the interest of time, we are, we've excluded some of them. But our words are their words. On behalf of Dwight, Carlo, our way of man, epitomized the meaning of brother and brotherhood. He was the life of most parties and social events, as he loved to socialize and have a beverage, as he often called it. I remember one such event where he was the last man standing after a few rounds of beverages. Consequently, he nicknamed some of those who could not stand as long, drink not and drink not a lot. Our brother had a passion for debating his point into the ground until, most, until all of us were tired out. Then he would look at you with that infectious laugh and smile and say to you, I told you so, when he eventually won the debate. The debate. However, with the same spirit, if he was wrong, he would come to you with a beverage in hand and say, buddy, 
you know you were right. COVID-19, that bad man, has changed Corpova for us, and it will never be the same. We will no longer have Powder Road, where we normally get our pre kadumat day session started with his mum looking on before she passed. We would help one another put on costumes, see what positions the bands were coming through the stadium, and as other people were on their way to meet their bands, they would also stop, and everybody would have a beverage by Carl. Carlo, even though your journey has been cut short, it has been a remarkable journey, and you have made an indelible mark on our lives, which will never be forgotten. May you rest in peace and rise in glory. From Lee, Carlo was Mr. Dependable, Mr. Reliable. When you called him, he would reply, yo guy, what's up, talk to me. And whatever you say or ask of him, he would reply, that easy, just give me a few and let me get back to you. And rest assured, he would always get back to you. He was always there for us, the Vax and anyone else he considered a friend. Carlo loved a good joke and laugh. And sometimes he was so overpowered with laughter, it left him speechless. On behalf of Corey, Carlo was truly my brother from another mother. He was the adopted son of both my parents, Jackie and Horace. When I think of family, the memories that evidence this for me are, Carl was right there by my side the night my father passed. I believe my mum would say that Carl would call her to check in more than I would. Carl was there and always checked in and looked out for Erica and Joshua during my many business trips. Carlo was my Vax brother from Combermere and UE days. The memories we have made are enough to last a lifetime. But here are a few select ones that also speak to Carlo's character. Carlo was the organizer of all of our carnival festivities. You've heard that already. Just pay and turn up. Everything else was organized flawlessly. Carlo was reliable and the, the one reliable person in the group for me. He got anything and everything done all of the time. They say no great story ever starts with someone drinking water. We have created many great stories, including but not limited to the night in the boatyard where there were shot, shot, shots, Mullins Day parties, annual Kadumat Day breakfast in Powder Road, climbing scaffolding at Carnival, and spring break in the grill. The details of a lot of these have to remain confidential. It is hard for me to accept that you will not be there when next I come home, but you will always be with me, with us and in our hearts. I miss you, buddy. Say hi to dad for me, rest in peace. On behalf of Ian, one thing that we can all agree on is that Carlo, was, Carlo always had an open heart and an open house. Carl's house on Powder Road was a prime meeting and sleeping location for any event at the stadium, Calypso, Reggae Show, Kadumat Day. Every first Monday in August, we would gather there early in the morning to get dressed for the jump. You've heard this several times from me before. You know how this went. There we would bless the day, the journey, and each other. Outside of those special events, those of us that played hockey would, re would have spent many a Saturday there, both before and after practice, sharing whatever we had and knew. We became closer, and even more than friends, we became brothers. Through the times we've had together, we came to recognize Carl not just as a great brother, but as a devoted son, as a loving partner, and as a wonderful father. This is the man that we are left not to mourn, but to celebrate. From me. Two years ago, Carl, Dwayne, Andre, and I traveled to Guyana to attend a car racing event. I travel to Guyana pretty often, sometimes two times a year for work. 
and have developed friendships with lawyers on there that I work with. On the first night of the trip with Carl, I took him out liming with me with one of my close friends. We were out around 3 a.m. until around 3 a.m. having our customary beverage. On our way back to the hotel, we passed my friend's property, and we noticed that the front door had been broken open. At 3 a.m., this could only mean one thing. Someone had broken into the property, and worse, they were still there. Suddenly, my friend pulled over his, his car. He scaled the fence and ran straight into the house. Feeling obligated, I jumped out of the car and scaled the fence too. Before I could get over the fence, Carol was already on the other side and ended up helping me over. We both ran straight into the house and started to search for the intruder. Could you? <laughs> Sounds like madness. When we got back to the hotel, I chastised Carl. And Reverend, forgive me. I said to Carl, Carl, what the hell are you thinking? You don't know this place. This is your first time you want to get yourself killed. Guess what Carl's response to me was? In the calmest of voices, he said, Buddy, first of all, both of us know that you weren't going to get over that fence without my help. <laughs> Secondly, we are the Vax, brothers for life. Where you go, I go. Thirdly, what is our motto? No man left behind. You would have done the same thing for me. The VATS consists of 15 guys. We like to think of ourselves as Distinguished gentlemen, <laughs> we come from varied backgrounds. We share the same values, hopes, and aspirations. Many of us went to the same primary school, secondary school, and university. We have different skill sets as professionals and different personalities. But even those two differences were blended together to make us a unit, a brotherhood. We were stronger together. We will be weaker without Carl, but his passing will unite us even more. Carlo, you left us behind, but you will always, always be with us in our hearts and in our thoughts. Thank you. We want to thank the VAX group for sharing their tribute, as it was a difficult moment for them to share such memories. At this time, my family in Christ, we now have the eulogy, which will be done by Tricia Beckles, um, partner of the deceased. Good afternoon. Eulogizing a soul such as Carl's is a monstrous task, almost impossible to undertake, but I will try to summarize. Never in a million years would I have ever thought that I would have to be standing here today to say goodbye to Carl, affectionately known as Carlo. He was my true love, a dad, my friend and confidant, a brother, a colleague, a giver, 
a go-getter, an overachiever, one of the most reliable and amiable, and a person whose heart was filled with altruism. God gave us a gem of a man on the 10th of October, 1976. Carl was born to the late Sybil, better known as Doreen and Earl Wave. He came from a relatively small family that consisted of his aunt Patricia, his late uncle Lionel, and his cousin Craig. Carl loved his mother and his aunt like no other. Nothing was ever too good for them. Patricia was a teacher and was often mistaken for Carl's mom, while Patricia's son Craig was taken for Doreen's son. Many times we'd be out and persons would stop and ask him, how was his mom, Mrs. Williams? And he would often have to correct them. He loved her like a mother, but Doreen was his heart. No matter where, the, where we went or where he slept, he, was, he always ensured he was home by 5.30 a.m. to make her breakfast and get her day started before heading out for work. Evenings were definitely no different. His mother was the queen of his life. He appreciated all the sacrifices she made for him while growing up and only thought it fitting to take care of her right up to her very last days, where he ensured he was at the hospital morning, noon, and night. The love and care he poured into his mom was beautiful insight into our future and a trait I always admired. He lived a simple but happy life in Powder Road, Station Hill. I often heard of his younger days and experiences with his adopted little brother, Ryan, the likes of Walter, Corey, Kelvin, Ryan, better known as Fish, and Paul, his two best friends, and a few others playing video games, running the streets, having sleepovers, etc. I also heard about the countless times he was sent to pick his own timing rod for whoopings by his mom for being hard ears, or not being home by the time the prison bell rang. He glowingly talked about his days at Wesley Hall Primary School, and of course, the illustrious university at Waterford, where he excelled and developed a love for hockey. He represented the school and later went on to join Commonwealth Old Scholars team. Carl was also a proud member of the Dominion hockey team, which he co-founded with some of his other hockey brothers, many of whom are here today. Up and on, buddy, up and on. His Commonwealth experience planted a seed which sprouted into a tremendous love for sports. Carl loved sports, you name it, whether hockey, cricket, tennis, car racing, golf, horse racing, and especially football, once it was showing, the TV was his. Oftentimes, I would have to beg for us to watch something else, anything else, please. But when that fell on deaf ears, I would wait for him to fall asleep, because this was sure to happen. Then I would change the channel. Of course, when he caught himself, he'd be like, Trees, what are you doing? I would resound, but you were sleeping. He would say, no, baby. I was resting my eyes during the commercial. <laughs> I would laugh and say, OK, Narca, a name I affectionately called him, short for narcoleptic, because Carl could drop sleep anywhere. And when I tell you anywhere, I mean anywhere. Standing in the middle of a fet and all. When he was game, he would indulge me in, he would indulge me with some of the other series that we came to enjoy together, CSI, Suits, Power, and CIS, even the DIY channel, just to name a few. Wait, how can I ever forget the movie sequel, Fast and Furious? Look, I swear we watched all them episodes like 10 times over. Just a couple weeks before his passing, we watched number six again, but not before him trying to convince me that we had never seen it before, just so he could watch it again. If you knew Carl, you know he would never pass up an opportunity to have a good argument about anything, and especially football. During football season, we couldn't go anywhere without him seeing multiple persons and exchanging heated, friendly banter on the sport. Don't talk about when he was home watching a game, and the team he was back in scored a goal. Man, he would go outside in all the excitement to either enjoy with our neighbors or pour up a set for them. Carl loved to run. He did several circuits in the surrounding areas on mornings to stay in shape, or as he often said to me, I got to lose this weight to fit in that tux and end it with a wink eye. He enjoyed many 5K runs with some of, this, some of the guys from the, his brotherhood, the Vax. The Vax was life from UB days. He spent lots of time liming, partying, sporting, or traveling with his brothers. Even though their lives changed as they matured and they spent less time together, Anytime any of them call, he was out and gone. They had a bond that was enviable and admirable all at the same time. 
His name was Carl with a K, but there was definitely a C in his name. The C stands for Propover and Carnival. His festivals were Carl's time, a staple he looked forward to every year. From the age of 26, Carl and his friends journeyed to Trinidad, and every year a new story like dedicated novelists. He was the chief cook and bottle washer in planning these trips for the guys. I couldn't understand it until we attended a few. Then I was able to write stories of my own. We had a blast, and I finally understood what all the hype was about. Propover, though, Propover, though, was different. For years, we enjoyed seven events together. When you saw him, you saw me. So much so that if I was seen out by myself, I was often asked, where Carl? Or you get permission for the boss? And I would have to remind him that was not the only time I was allowed out, you know. Even when we jumped in separate bands and he done jumped on everybody girl child, somehow he would always wait to, to walk back to find me so that we could jump the rest of the way down together. Boy, we had some good times. Carl had a laugh that was indescribable. It was infectious. Even if I was upset with him, I couldn't help but smile or laugh alone. If you heard it, you would know what I mean. You just had to laugh. It was genuine, and I just loved to hear it because it meant all was well in his world. He loved his god kids like his own and always gloomily talked about being there for some of their births. Carl loved his friends and cared deeply for people. He was always there to help in one way or another, whether it was through an encouraging word, sharing of advice, doing a task, assisting with paying a bill, or lending money to help out when people didn't get paid in time. He was always ready to help. He also loved to give a nickname to people who were special to him. His mom was Super Dupes, our sweet punk Kurtz. Jay was Booba. I was Trees, Baby Boo, or my wife. Ashley was Ash. Amanda was Manda Panda, or Mandy. Zara was Zaza Boozy. In his work life, he was Harvey from the series Sweet Suits, sorry. And Winston was his Mike Ross. He had this thing that once he knew where you lived, he would blow the horror when passing, even if you weren't there to see or hear it. Thirteen years ago, I was not looking for love, but it definitely came in the form of Carl. I came with a baby whom I shared unselfishly with him. He became our son. Carl proved to be everything I didn't need, know I needed. I never thought someone could love Jaden and I the way Carl did. It was unconditional and undeniable. He was often teased in our earlier days about how invested he was in this little boy's life. And he didn't, but he didn't let that bother him at all. To Jaden, Carl was dad, and Carl surely took that responsibility seriously. Carl went above and beyond for our son. He arranged everything from school pickups to sleepovers to family trips. He even took up ironing school clothes when I figured Jay was old enough to do it on his own. Carl promised that he would stop the next school term, but of course that never happened. He had him spoilt all the while preparing him for his life as a teenager and setting great examples for our young and impressionable Jaden to follow. Watching them together was a dream come true for me. I had my own family. From the time I met Carl, he would often tell me he wanted to take care of me. Being an independent person, that was a struggle for me. But I had to learn to give up the fight because he was always two steps ahead of me. And he always said, I got you covered, baby. I got you covered. He was definitely loving, committed, caring, the most thoughtful, the ultimate provider anyone could ask for. He had a way of surprising me with everything, and I mean everything, even the things that I wanted to be included in. Every time I call, he would say, Trees, don't ask me what you're doing, tell me what you want. This speaks volume to the type of partner and dad he was. He was perfectly imperfect. Carl alluded to marriage and unbeknownst to me, he had several talks with Jaden, my mother and some of my close friends about his plans. He clearly had plans that would never come to fruition. One of my friends reminded me of when he used to call to play Ed Sheeran song, Thinking Out Loud. Well, Carl, I guess I will continue loving you until I am 70 now. Of course, no relationship is ever perfect. 
I was the direct one, he was the diffuser, but not before putting up a good argument So, Whatever the issue was, I just couldn't stay mad at him for too long, because he would always find a way back into my heart. He could sweet talk his way out of any situation, even the impossible ones. I'd often say to myself, wait a minute, <laughs> didn't I really fall for that? Every step of our relationship was worthwhile. There was a beauty that radiated from him, his heart, and his smile. I will certainly miss his warmth. The comforting trees that graced my ears, which encouraged deep breaths and a wave of calm during my difficult times will forever be silenced. I will never hear in real time his excitement upon answering my calls, my wife, or hear the car engine pulled up to the house as and the key turned in the door signaling he was home with a big goofy smile to make your heart melt. On the 5th of July, Carl's caring nature was still evident. He rubbed my back to console me while telling me he, loved, he truly loved me. It was going to be all right. You and Jay are going to be fine. He cared deeply for me, for us. We were fine. My mother fondly remembers Carl as one of her sons. He so poignantly expressed his appreciation for her role in his life through the words of Jimmy Cliff's song, which he sent to her as recent as Mother's Day. The lyrics to Dear Mother are, she's my mother and I love her so. Their relationship strengthened over time, especially after the passing of his mom. Carl lovingly described my mother as a mom to all. His final quote to her read, no matter where you are in life, if you let love and kindness be your guide, you'll always find your way. This is a testament to Carl's demeanor, as love and kindness were the guiding principles for his interactions. Family was important to him, but so was work. His work ethic was unwavering and evident in everything he did. He was fully committed to, get to the given task and continued to above and beyond to attain the best result. Carl was always working. There were many occasions where Carl would excuse himself from festivities to take a work call, fix an issue at work, or to assist his rental clients. He ensured everyone was covered. Work was a major part of his being. It was admirable but annoying at the same time because it meant that he would spend less time at home. I often had to remind myself that was a man I chose. And he constantly reminded me that everything he was doing was for a better life for us. Today, I don't want to admit that Carl is gone. And only God knows how I'd like to wake up from this awful dream. My heart is broken and our lives forever change. But to you, I say, cherish the moments you made with him. Sorry, cherish the moments with him that made you smile. Carl, I will forever miss and love you. We had a rule never to say goodbye. And so I'll continue that. See you later, hon. For your soul rest in peace. At this time, we will have a poem which was recorded by Jaden Cox, uh, the son of the deceased, and we will have the recording at this time. Dear Dad, it is so hard for me to say goodbye. I miss the love that twinkled in your eye. I was always proud to call you Dad. You're the best friend a son could ever have. The day you left, I gained your wings. My heart just broke in two. I wish you could have stayed with me, but heaven needed you. You are a very special person with kindness in your heart and the love we had, I promise dad, will grow stronger now we're apart. The times we laughed, the times we cried, now live inside my mind. A piece of me went with you that day. I'll miss your heart so kind. No. Your golden heart has stopped beating, and your loving soul is at rest. What you said to me in the kitchen, 
I will honor your final request. Dad, I will fill your big, empty shoes. The man of the house I will become. I'll take care of your precious love. My mom. A very difficult moment for those who grieve at this time, and I pray God's comfort and peace to be with you for those who grieve and for those who are mourning at this time for their loss. At this time, we'll have another tribute, which will be done by Kern Jamot. We welcome that person to the podium as we listen to another tribute.
We thank Kern Jamont and company for blessing our hearts with such wonderful and beautiful music this afternoon. At this time, finally, we have another tribute, which will be done by Brother Anton Bess. We invite him to give us the final tribute for today. Good afternoon. Despite the heaviness in my heart, I'm truly honored to be here with you to deliver this tribute on behalf of Lieutenant Colonel, the Honorable Jeffrey Bostick Minister, Mrs. Janet Phillips, Permanent Secretary, and staff of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, past and present. We extend our deepest heartfelt condolences to his family and friends. Carl was a whole lot more than a co-worker to many of us. He was also a cherished friend, someone very special who will be missed dearly. Allow me to begin with a brief history of Carl's work at the Ministry of Health, which began a decade ago, when he came to us to head our IT department. Carl's talent, his professional attitude, effervescent nature, and amicable demeanor were evident from the start. He helped revolutionize the ministry's approach to the use of IT, whether it was for internal communication or for health promotion through social media. Carl's accomplishments range from improving internet access at headquarters and the various service delivery sites across the country to increasing the accessibility to email, allowing for more efficient communication within the Ministry of Health and with other entities. He was integral to the successful implementation of MedData, the health information system, across most public healthcare facilities. This ambitious project took more than four years of rigorous planning and execution. More recently, he helped with the implementation of a laboratory information management system at the recently amalgamated National Public Health Laboratory. Carl was instrumental in the paradigm shift in the way we approach information technology. This allowed us at Health to improve administration and to become more efficient and effective in monitoring and delivering delivery of healthcare services in Barbados. He was also a very vocal member, sorry, very vocal contributor who commanded attention at our management meetings, very frequently giving sound advice on various issues, even commenting on matters beyond his field of expertise. Carl has had an undeniable impact on the health landscape of Barbados by his leadership in improving health IT. Carl was a whole lot more than a colleague to many of us. He was a dear friend and a brother. With his warm, caring, fun-loving spirit in the workplace, Carl was capable of motivating and inspiring those around him. He was compassionate and always willing to assist a troubled workmate. He had an uncanny ability to diffuse tense moments. I remember Carl once being in a meeting with me and becoming, when I became visibly infuriated over a matter, he texted me to say, calm down, guy, calm down. He'd often give advice like, swim away, buddy, swim away, to a colleague who was experiencing challenges. Carl's loud voice will be missed in the corridors of the Ministry of Health and Wellness headquarters. There's a huge void left at our workplace as we remember him saying things like, man, I can sort you out. I got you covered. I'm on it. Carl's joie de vivre was always present. This guy loved to socialize and party, whether it was his after work limes or his escapades to carnival. This was the essence of Carl. He will definitely be missed. His devotion to loved ones, friends, and particularly his son, Jaden, was yet another sterling illustration of the giant of a man that Carl Waith was. I conclude this brief tribute with excerpts from a poem written by one of our colleagues, Audrey Lovell Wickham. Carl Waith, as I saw him, his life was all before him. He was all of 43. Carl Waith, we all did love him, the head of our IT. Bubbly and effervescent, 
His smile was worth a million in any currency. His heart was also human. This life of the party, gone too soon. Whose warmth and laughter can soothe, can move, can heal. And so with sadness, remembering the gladness, may our Carl rest in peace. Goodbye, Carl. You were loved and will be sorely missed. Up and on, my friend. Up and on. At this time, we'll take comfort in scriptures that comes to us from Psalm 121, which will be read to us by Amanda Daniel, after which we have the second reading from 2 Corinthians 47, 10 to 16, 7 to 10, 16 to 18, by Zara Holder. First lesson by Amanda Daniel. Today's scripture reading is taken from Psalms 121, taken from the King James Version. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even evermore. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson comes to us from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 7 to, 7 to 10, and 16 to 18 by Zara Holder. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and, moment, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us and eternal, and eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Here ends the Bible. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. At this time, we will stand to our feet, and as we will sing together the hymn, Great Are You, Lord, as we invite our soulists for this service, Sister Sonjina Curtin, who will lead us in the singing of this hymn. Holy, holy, God Almighty, it's a privilege to worship you. And just to advise that it is the offertory hymn, as the ushers will come around for the collection.
seated my family in Christ at this time. We now listen to the word of God as it comes to us from scripture. I now invite the Reverend Dr. Adrian Smith who will now give us the word of God. But before we do so, we'll have the prayer for our offering. Let us as we bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your mercy at this time. Thankful, O Lord, for the gift of your hands to us. And as we give, O oh Lord, this portion of our gift to you, we pray, O oh God, that we will give our lives and our hearts and soul to you. And may your blessing be upon us all as we come to you, Lord, to worship you in this place. In Christ Jesus we pray, and all God's people say, Amen and Amen. Permit me, family in Christ, to once again, on behalf of the pastoral leadership here at the Calvary Moravian Church, 
the associate pastor, the Reverend Delroy Burley, and myself, the leadership and all the members here at Calvary to once again extend our sympathies and condolences. In particular, to Sister Pat Williams, who is a member here, along with her son, Craig, and to all who sit in the mourner's seat. I read to us again the word of God from Psalm 121. Psalm 121. I will then offer a theme for us that I believe is appropriate in this setting. Share a few thoughts and take my seat. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and he will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. The word of God for the people of God. The theme I offer for us this afternoon as we gather, there is help and there is hope. There is help and there is hope. If you've ever come to a service here, is at this point I tell the members, you take out your cell phones, put it as your WhatsApp status, send it to a friend, tell somebody there is help and there is hope. Would you turn to the person sitting next to you and tell them there is help and there is hope? You don't have to know this person. You don't even know what they may be going through. Turn to the next person and just tell them there is help and there is hope. Put it as your WhatsApp status, put it up on Facebook, Message a friend that you know need to hear that right about now. And just tell them there is help and there is hope. Let us pray. God, I ask that you will do what you've often done. And that is to simply uphold this lump of clay. Allow the words of my mouth, the reflection and meditation of all our hearts to be acceptable unto you. For you are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The circumstances surrounding Carl's death continue to trouble many of us. For some, they're just haunting questions that have not yet been answered. For some of us, we are playing over in our last, in our minds, our last encounters with Carl to see if we missed particular cues. There are those who are wondering about all the what-ifs. Some are even asking, what about his soul? I'm not sure my family in Christ that I have any or all the answers to what persons may be going through today. But I've stopped by being sent by God to remind you in this moment that as we must continue to live our lives, there is help and there is hope. I've stopped by to remind you, Trisha. Pat, Craig, family, co-workers, Ministry of Health, colleagues, Commemorians, those who play hockey from the hockey fraternity, whoever you are, whether you are physically in this sanctuary or you are streaming this service, whatever you are going through right now in your life, you could be going through hell and high water. I'll stop by to tell you there is help and there is hope. The psalm that the family have chosen today is believed to be a psalm of ascent. One of those psalms that the children of Israel would sing as they were traveling up to Jerusalem for one of the festivals that God would have ordained. It is a song for the journey. It is a song on the journey. It's one of those songs that they would sing often to remind themselves that it does not matter how difficult this journey gets. Somehow we got to believe that God will carry us through. God will take us through. God will be there for us. And I'll stop by to remind somebody who is right now struggling in their own lives 
that today, beloved in Christ, you are under the sound of my voice because God needs you to hear, somebody needs you to know, and you need to be reminded that on this journey called life, no matter the ups, the downs, the twists, the turns, the setbacks, that there is help and there is hope. Can I break this down with three simple thoughts for you and take my seat? Firstly, can I remind everybody under the sound of my voice, there will be struggles, but fight on. Can I tell somebody in this church that on this journey of life, there will be struggles, but you have to fight on. The psalmist asks a question, where does my help come from? I, I believe that if he was not struggling or wondering or questioning or if there wasn't somebody who was having a difficult time, this question would not have been asked in the text. But the mere fact that the text raises this question, it suggests to me that there are times in our lives when we honestly struggle, when we are going through difficulties, when the barriers and the mountains in front of us look like if it is just too much for us to bear. And the question that we ask and the question that we raise and the question that we are wrestling with today is that somebody says preacher man where will my help come from my family may not help me my co-workers may not help me uh, the people I expect in the community may not help me but is there any help that would come my way I stop by to tell somebody that yes uh, the Bible declares that when we ask the question where does our help come from there is a response that says my help comes from the Lord but there are some of us we are going through a really rough time some are dealing with illnesses some are dealing with accidents some are dealing with economic realities some are dealing with unemployment some are dealing with debt some are dealing with their own spiritual struggles about life and their purpose of life and whether they have fulfilled all that life has called you to be a I hear Paul's letter to the church at Corinth reaching you right now here's what the apostle Paul says he says we have this treasure in clay guards that the excellency of God may be of him and not of us but he acknowledges is this struggling in life he says listen my family we are afflicted in every way but we are not crushed we are perplexed at times but we are not driven to despair we are persecuted but we are not forsaken we are at times struck down life sometimes hits us really hard and, and before we can get back on our feet things seem to get worse before they get better but I've stopped by to tell somebody that God is your refuge and strength a very present help in time of trouble I've stopped by to tell somebody that even before the mountains were formed or brought forth in the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting he is God and God is bigger than our mountains he is bigger than our circumstances you need to take your eyes off your problems sometimes and look beyond the hills and recognize that in this journey of life there will be struggles but you got to fight on I believe my family in Christ is important for you to see that you cannot give up the fight you can't give up the fight I know there are times that life causes us to be worse off than where we were. I know there are times that we are living in a Barbadian society that often hides behind pride. And so we have this sense of not allowing persons to see us being vulnerable or weak. But I'll stop by to tell somebody that at this stage of my life, I don't care whether you see me weak or crying. Listen, every one of us got problems. Uh, and, uh, every one of us got struggles. And, and if you're living this life long enough, no matter how much you put in your hair or how much you tuck here or touch there, this body of yours or this robe of flesh is decaying. Yet, I've stopped by to tell somebody in the struggles of life, fight on. Secondly, can I submit to you, there is help and there is hope. Your God has not forgotten you. Hold on. I'm telling somebody today, your God has not forgotten you. Hold on. Tell somebody, hold on. Come on, tell somebody, hold on. Your God has not forgotten you. You got to hold on. He says he will not 
let your foot be moved. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade upon your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. Yet, beloved in Christ, we, we understand that there are times when people are not there for us. And no wonder the writer quickly told those who were listening. He says, your Lord, your God, the Lord, Yahweh, the covenant-keeping, covenant relationship God, he will always remember you. It's, it's difficult, beloved, in Christ sometimes to, to, to look at another young person and see that their life has ended and wonder why yours is still going on. It's, it's hard, my family, sometimes to wonder how to help some people when they will not let you into their space. But somehow, we got to believe that our help comes from a God who does not slumber, who does not sleep, a God who is not too busy to hear your heart's cry. I, 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 I've had people ask me over and over again, well, Pastor Adrian, since I don't go to church, will God still hear my prayers and will God still hear my cry? I've stopped by to tell somebody, you may not have been to church for however long, but the God I serve and the God you serve will yet hear your prayer and hear your heart's cry, beloved in Christ. This God is never too busy for you. Uh, I marvel as I thought about this. Uh, the, the ad that often says that we are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, including Sunday. And I said to myself, wow. Well, if a business could try to do that, why do I doubt a God who says he neither slumbers nor sleep? I believe it is because some of us may be struggling with why it is that some people who are seemingly wicked and seemingly doing stuff seem to get ahead or nothing seems to happen to them, but only those who are trying and struggling seem to be bearing burden upon burden. I, I want to encourage somebody today, you are not forgotten. You are not forgotten. God says, I will be with you, lo, always, even to the end of the earth. And so what you need then is a determination to hold on. Holding on, beloved in Christ, is to hold on to a God that we trust. I was looking at the word for believing in God, and Brother Craig, one of the other words for belief is to trust. And so when people say, do you believe in God, perhaps another way we can phrase it is, do you trust God? And then the question you have to ask yourself is, why won't I trust God? Uh, because if I have a belief in God, I'm going to trust that God is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do. And, and that's why the psalmist goes on to tell Israel, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade upon your right hand. He says, whether it is day or night, uh, whether it is morning, evening, whether you are young or old, whether you are at work or in the community, it does not matter where you are, what you are going through, God will not forget you. Uh, I'm stopping by to tell somebody under the sound of my voice that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a God who does not forget you. People will forget you. There are some people who only want you because of your status. Some people only want to be close to you because of your contacts. Some people only hooking up with you because you are the popular in crew person right now. But as things get difficult, you can can't find them and you can wonder where they went all the time. There are some people who know how to call your number, but whenever you talk to them and need them, they never got credit on their phone. Can I talk to somebody this afternoon? <laughs> there are some people who are only on you almost like a leech, just simply sucking the life out of you. But God says, if you come to me just as you are. And that's why we sing a song in this church that says, all I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But this God made something uh, beautiful of my life. He doesn't want you because you're perfect. He doesn't want you because you have it all together. He wants you just the way you are. Because when you are weak, that's when God is strong. That's when God does what God does best. Uh, there are people who will want to dismiss you and say, you have too much baggage. Your past is too checkered. But hallelujah, I am thankful this afternoon that there is a God. Uh, that it does not matter what I have done. This God says, come to me all ye who weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest he does not forget so you need to hold on hold on my family hold on to the unchanging arms of God hold on to your time of prayer hold on to some family 
Hold on to some meaningful friendships. Hold on to some things that are worth more than any amount of money. Hold on to some stuff that will carry us through life. And for those of us in faith, we often say that we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to a rock which can't be moved, grounded firm and deep through all the changing scenes of life. Our God does not change. And the old women in, in church would sing a song, rejoice for the steps of a righteous man. They are ordered by God. In the time of trouble, God will uphold you. God will preserve you. In the time of trouble, God will lift you up because God never forgets about you. I've got to go, we've got to go to this burial, but I have to give you one more point. There is help and there is hope. The struggle will be there, but fight on. Our God has not forgotten you, hold on. But finally, there is a future, press on. Mm. There will be struggles, fight on. Our God has not forgotten us. Hold on. There is a future. Press on. The Lord will keep you from all evil and he will keep your life. The Lord will preserve your going out and your coming in from this time on and even forevermore. Perhaps many people look at Carl and would have been envious of his life, his joy, his fun, his successes. And the truth is we never know what a person is going on with and going through deep within. There's a saying that is often said by the elderly of our community, don't ever grudge anybody, you don't know how they got their blessings. And we're often encouraged to chart and to press ahead with the future that we believe that God has in store for us. Here is the deeper assurance, beloved in Christ. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. There are those moments, beloved in Christ, when we are really low. Those times when evil is abounding. Those times when hardships seem to be our daily bread. I remind myself when I was preparing this sermon about the need to, to press on. I, I was encouraged yet again by reading the story of a woman who for 18 years had it hard. The Bible said that she spent all the money that she had, went to doctor after doctor, and nobody could help her. And one would think that because that nobody could help her and all the doctors could help her, that she would have been excused to just end life right there. The Bible tells me that it wasn't getting any better. Uh, but the Bible tells me that she kept on living. And the Bible says that one day Jesus was passing by. And all this woman determined in her mind was, I, I don't need to have an audience with him. I, I don't need to have him spend an hour with me. I don't need to do all the gymnastics. I don't need the rituals and the routine. All I need to do is touch the hem of his garment because I believe that there's still a future for me. Uh, this society might have said, woman, because of your situation, you ought not to be here. But there are times, beloved in Christ, when you have to forget about what people think, forget about what people say forget about the statistics sometimes uh, and you got a purpose that I am going to hold on I am going to press on I believe that there's a purpose for my life a purpose for living a reason why God has me on this earth and I will press and hold on to the hem of his garment there's a man the Bible tells me who was born blind and very often there are people beloved in Christ who use your situation as a songboard for gossiping and, and, and trying things. Everybody looked at this man and said, all right, he born blind and they were willing to trap Jesus, waiting for Jesus to come to get the better of him. And they asked the question, who sinned, this man or his parents? And, 
And Jesus says, well, uh, his situation is such so that God would get the glory. And, and, and Jesus heals the man. And the people go to the man afterwards and say, but who healed you? And was he a sinner or not? And the man had to say to them, listen, people, uh, it didn't matter to me whether he was a sinner or not. I know I was blind. And, and I know that there are times when nobody else can help me. But I have a friend uh, that sticks closer than a brother. His name is Jesus. I have a God that I can call upon morning, noon, or night. Uh, and he says to them, whether he sinned or not, whether he was a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I know, I was blind, but now I can see. I am going to press on with my life. Can I talk to you about some people who did not give up the fight? I encourage you today, don't give up this fight. For there was a fellow called Peter. And very often people looked at Peter as this brash person. Now you might always get any in trouble. And many would have written off Peter at the time when Jesus would have predicted, yeah, you can deny me. And Peter said, no, 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 no. I ain't going to deny you. You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Whoa, Peter, yeah, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. But here what, Peter, before the cock crows, you will deny me. No, 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 no not me, pa no, not me, not me, master. I will die for you. In the Garden of Gethsemane, everybody who was with Jesus left him. Ran, left him. Peter pulled out a sword in an attempt to defend, but he too, a little later, the text tells me, is by a fire warm in his hands. And a little girl asked him, Are you not one of these men who was with him? And Peter, before a little girl, could not even stand up for Jesus. Nobody would have given this man another chance. Nobody would have thought that. This man who was one of the inner circle of Jesus' company could ever be redeemed because, hey, but you denied him. You abandoned him when he needed you the most. But I'm glad this afternoon that the God I serve is a God of a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth chance. I'm talking to somebody here. God will give you chances upon chances. The Bible tells to me that Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. But when you have returned, strengthen your brothers. Uh, there will come a time when God will pick you up. God will carry you. The psalmist says, uh, he brought me out of the merry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. And God uh, put a song in my soul to sing. A song of praise. Hallelujah. And Peter, the Bible tells me, gets a chance that on the day of Pentecost, they were all in Jerusalem. And they thought that these guys were drunk. And Peter stands up and preaches a sermon and 3,000 people get saved that day. Pastor, what you're trying to say, I'm trying to say, beloved in Christ, that there is a future you got to press on. Nobody knows the future except God. We don't understand the seasons and the times at times in our lives, but the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. It is believed that Asian Israel would often repeat these words whenever they started a journey, whenever they were leaving the house or whenever they were coming back in. The Lord will, will preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forward and even forevermore. And I know that Carl's life may have ended, but you still have yours this afternoon. I, I know some of you may not be churchy or into church and struggling with faith and have had some bad experiences, but God is still here for you. I've stopped by to tell somebody that it it may not be this week, it may not be next week, it may not be next month, but problems and trials will always come our way. But you have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You got to press on. So how do I close? I close by inviting this community to press on by being a community. Not just a community that says hi to each other, but a community that shows care for each other. Sometimes we say hi and don't even wait for the person to answer and we've gone on. Sometimes we are only saying hi when we want something. But if we are in community, caring for each other means making that sacrifice to talk when we don't want to talk. Means making time when we don't have the time. But because people are important, we connect. I said to my church recently that there are too many people who hear this voice telling them, call this person, talk to this person, and we ignore it. Can I say to us, when you get that reminder, please do. Can I say to this community, when 
that voice tells you pick up the phone, send a WhatsApp, send a text message to somebody, please be obedient. Your words could be life-saving words. Your words, that text, that call could be just what that person needed at just that moment. It's not that you needed to know it is that, it is that God so orchestrates that he places us right in the path of people at the time when they need help the most. Care for each other. Call each other. Visit with each other. I am a pastor and have to do 17 years into this thing and every funeral is still different. You want to remind persons, spend time with people while they are alive. There will come a time when we will not see those persons anymore. It doesn't matter. When I was growing up, I thought that only old people died. I thought that only people who were really sick would die. And I've come to see in my short time in this world that every one of us could die. And time waits for no one. Can I also say to us, please treat each other with human dignity and respect. Yes, we are part of that group of people who call themselves Comamarians, because once a Comamarian, always a Comamarian. We are from the University of Waterford, and some of you may think that we enough and full of ourselves, well, that's your business. <laughs> but one of the things that the formation at Comamir has sought to do was to remind you that it didn't matter whether you came from Station Hill or St. George, we are human beings. It didn't matter whether you were from St. Lucy or St. Joseph, we are all human beings. It didn't matter whether your parents picked you up or you went to the back gate and bought rotis from Elaine or catch one of the ZRs, it didn't matter. We are all one family. And so that's why we say, once a Comamarian, always a Comamarian. Up and on, treat that person with respect. Treat that person with human dignity. Treat that person because that person is also made in the image and likeness of God. Can I say to you, press on. It would be remiss of me if I did not stop to also remind somebody, hey, there will always be bills. There will always be problems. And to the fellow colleagues at the Ministry of Health, let me tell you, there will always be work. Oh, I'm sorry. There will always be work. Beloved in Christ, you can't kill work. Work will kill you first. And there comes a point when someday you just got to shut it down. There comes a point when you just have to turn off that computer. There comes a point when you just got to get up from that screen, take a stretch, go get some water, get something to drink. There comes a point when you should go hug your family, lift up your children, watch some TV, go play something. There comes a point when you got to say, all right, work. I know there's work. I'm not being irresponsible. But can I tell somebody there's more to life than just work? And too many of us are building our lives around work so that when we have to retire, we can't retire because there was never ever a life recreated outside of work. Life is too short. Life is too precious. Don't allow work to consume you to a point where you forget about everybody else around you. There will always be bills. There will always be problems. But hear what the writer says and I'm going... He says, what then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not also with him give us everything? Who will bring any charge against the elect of God? It is a God who justifies. Who is to condemn us? It is Christ who died, yes, and who was raised, and who is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Who will intercede for us? Uh, who will separate us from the love of God? Will hardship or distress, will persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? He says, no, 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 no. Nah, as it's been written, we've been killed all day long, like sheep to a slaughter. But listen, my family, in all these things, we we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and gave himself for us for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord so 
Don't let the problem kill you. Don't let the persecution kill you. Don't let that sense of feeling alone and being alone kill you. Don't let that sense of feeling that you are a letdown to anybody stop you from realizing that God can still use you. Don't let your past tell you that there's not a future. For the God I serve, he's the one who makes something beautiful out of nothing. I've stopped by to tell somebody, there is help and there is hope. For there will be struggles, fight on. God has not forgotten you, hold on. And there is a future, press on. And let the people of God say, Amen. shall you bow your heads in prayer with me? I live by a conviction that the funeral sermon is not for the dead, but for the living. I don't come to play and I don't come to waste time. My life has only been preserved and spared by the grace and love of this God. I've come to understand that sometimes we come to funerals and we can't even concentrate on anything in the funeral because our life is just so rough, so hard, so difficult. I've come to understand that sometimes we just need that pause in the day. That pause in the moment. That moment to just breathe out, let down your hair, and somehow hope that somebody knows exactly what we are going through. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. But just before I go, I want to pray for somebody today who will say, Pastor Adrian, I believe that there is help and I believe that there is hope. Could you pray for me? And if that is you right where you are, whether you want to stand or raise your hand, could you do that? And my closing prayer will be for you. If there's somebody across the sanctuary, whether you are on the outside and you just say, Pastor, would you just offer that prayer for me? Because I believe, and my life is hard, things are rough, I'm struggling. Maybe you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I have not even, it still seems numb to me that Carl has died. I, I, I don't know what to do with myself. I'm not sleeping well, I'm not eating well. Maybe you are here and his death has triggered the memories about somebody else who died. And all you feel is pain. Can I just pray for you? If there's one other person who will say, Pastor, pray for me, you just raise your hand or stand. And my closing prayer will be for you. I see those hands. Is there one other person, wherever you are, who will say, Preacher, man, I ain't really into the church thing, but you said something there, and I, I want a little pray. If that's you. Because one of the things I'm glad about is God never judged me. And he won't judge you, so I can't judge you. I try to deal with my own sins every day. Can I pray for somebody else who will say, Pastor, I know there's a funeral, but gosh, Pastor, gosh, heads are bowed. Brother Andrew, give me one verse. What a friend. And we'll sing the other two verses after the prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs there. Maybe there's somebody outside who was talking, and you've just heard that part, and for you it's like, okay, you know what? Let me just crawl, draw closer. Right where you are, just come. Because we don't know what we have to face tomorrow. We don't know. Ministry of Health, you are on the front lines in a fight. And we don't know how it will turn. And you've been fighting and you've been fighting. But I know sometimes we get tired. The Bible says, even the young get weary and faint. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings, as eagles. It's all right for us to, to hit pans and to encourage you and send you texts. But you need a strength that is beyond that which we say. You need the help of God and God alone. Somebody else all across where you are. Let's just sing this one verse. What a friend. And I take you before the Lord in prayer. And then we stand together and sing the rest of verses as we prepare to leave this place. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace. And oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry. All because we do not carry. Everything to God. Everything to God in prayer. 
Gracious God, we are sitting in this sanctuary, we are streaming this service. And some of us, we are willing now to say to you, God, we are struggling. God, yes, we may be strong for other people, but deep on the inside, God, it hurts. God, we wander sometimes. We have our own fears, we have our own doubts. I pray, God, that you would hold each and every person right now in the hollow of your hand. I pray, God, that you would touch someone from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet and assure them, God, that in their weakness, you are their strength. You are no our strength, God, strength like no other. God, sometimes we feel you and at times we don't even know if you remember us. And God, we have questions and we have doubts. And sometimes, God, we have bad days. And yes, God, we know some of us, we have our bad ways. And there's still a lot of work in us that needs to be done. But hallelujah, God, you have not given up. I thank you, God, that you extend your loving arms to every person under the sound of my voice. Even at a funeral service to remind somebody, press on. To remind somebody, hold on. To remind somebody to keep on keeping on. Fight on, child of God. I pray that God will revive somebody today. I pray that God will restore somebody. I pray that somebody will get some energy. You have been tired physically, not sleeping well, but there is a, a living water that comes from God, an, an anointing that enables you to get up tomorrow and to go again. Father, in the name of Jesus, there's a family that does not know how to live uh, uh, tomorrow, that, that uh, finds Sundays to be such difficult days, uh, but you are a comforter in times such as this. Father, I call upon your name even now to somebody who has major decisions to make in their life. Uh, they don't know whether to turn left or right, uh, whether to go forward or to go back. Uh, but I pray, God, for clarity of thought. Uh, I pray for peace of mind. Uh, I pray, God, that you would speak uh, into the inner recesses of their soul. Uh, Heavenly Father, there's somebody else uh, who has hardened their heart uh, because they're tired of the hurt. Uh, they're tired of the gossip. Uh, they're tired of the pain. Uh, they're tired of the backbiting. They're tired of the maliciousness. Uh, they're tired of the rumors. Uh, they're tired of the fake, pretensive people. Uh, but devil, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would shield that person afresh. Uh, that you would cause that person, Lord, uh, to be strengthened from the inside out. Uh, and yet, God, you would place in their lives people to help. May God open your eyes to see they are more with you than against you. May God open your ears to hear not just the negativity, not just the problems, but the glory of his peace, his joy, and his love. May God give you that pause moment so that you can rest your weary souls, rest your burdens, lay them at this altar call, Jesus. You've walked into this church service and you had no idea. But yes, God remembered you. He knows your circumstance. Maybe you're embarrassing, Pastor. I can't tell you the last time I prayed that that's all right. God did not forget about you. Pastor, you don't understand. It's so complex. And that's true. I may never understand. But God, he does. And there is no complexity in life that is too difficult for God to handle child of God, I speak peace to your spirit. Man, woman of God, inside, outside, on this stream, I speak the peace of God over you. Press on, hold on, and fight on. And may God give us all the daily grace that makes living possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Stand with me as we sing then, verses 2 and 3, of what a friend we have in Jesus. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anyway? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer.
Who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Jesus knows our every weakness. Why don't you take it to him? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Cumbered with a load of care. Cumbered with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Why don't you take it to the Lord in prayer? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Do thy friends despise, forsake Come on, somebody, take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms, he'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there. We're going to sing verse one. Just one more time. Verse one, Brother Andrew, can we sing What a Friend? What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins. All our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, yeah, what a privilege it is. Everything, everything to God. Everything to God in prayer. How oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. And oh, what needless peace. Oh, what needless things we bear. All because we do not carry. Oh. Everything, everything, everything to God. So just before we pray, do one final thing for me. Just turn to somebody now and say it like you mean it. Tell them there is help and there is hope. Come on, turn to somebody else. Tell them there is help and there is hope. Well, just say that to that person. They, they may not tell you anything else that's going on with them. But I pray that that word from God will just be cemented in your heart, your spirit. Know that there is help and there is hope. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive, forgive those who trespass. Against us. And lead us not into. Temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The power. And the glory. Forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Eternal God. Before whose face the generations rise and pass away. We bless and praise your name for all your servants who have departed our life, and especially for our brother Carl Waith. Carlo, for all your loving kindness to him throughout his earthly life, we give you thanks. We thank you that for him, all sickness, sorrow, wrestlings, and pain are over. Death itself is past. And we ask you, Almighty God, that we, inspired, encouraged, by his life, the life of saints, and those who continue to fight on, that we may run with patience the race that is set before us, looking on to Jesus, who is the author, the perfecter, and the finisher of our faith, so that when this mortal life is ended, we may be gathered with those whom we have loved in the kingdom of your glory, where there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away through Jesus Christ our Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who mourn. One more time, God, we ask you to comfort them in their sadness. Uphold them with your strong love. Help them to face the future without fear, knowing that they and all whom they love are in your hands, and that nothing in life, not even death itself, shall separate any one of us from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Even Almighty God, we pray for the family, 
We pray for the close friends. We pray, God, that as we get to this point, when we will not even see anymore the mortal remains of our brother, that you will offer to us that inner divine supernatural strength that allows us to face this moment, broken, wounded, crying, wrestling, but that in the midst of it all, you speak peace. I pray, God, that you will bind the family together with the cords of love that cannot be broken. I pray, God, that even when the appeal of food wins and wanes, when WhatsApps and phone calls are few and far between, that you will never leave them and assure them that you are always by their side. May his grace be multiplied to you, family, friends, now and forevermore, and the people of God say, Let us commend our brother, Carl Waith, to the mercy of God, his maker and redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your power you gave us life, and in your love you have given us a new life in Jesus Christ. We entrust our brother Carl Waith to your merciful keeping, in the hope and the assurance, almighty God, that you are still merciful, you are still kind, you are still benevolent. And that God, even in those last moments, you alone, God, would have had his ear and his attention. We therefore pray, Heavenly Father, that even now, God, we entrust him to you through your son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again, that we might enjoy eternal life. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep and guard your hearts and your minds in the love and knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ, and the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you, remain with you, and abide with you, with those whom you love, and with those who make it difficult for you to love, now and forevermore. And the people of God say, we are going to ask you to keep the center aisle and left aisle clear. We're going to have the recession at this time. We will recess and proceed up to Coral Ridge for the interment of this body. But I just feel constrained by the Spirit of God to one more time say to this house, and to those under the sound of my voice, whether streaming or otherwise, please remember, there is help and there is hope. Please remember, whatever you're going through, doesn't matter how bad it is, how embarrassing it is, how painful or how long, there is help and there is hope. We ready ourselves, Paul Bearers, for the recession. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you. Standing right here talking to you about another path. I know we love to hit the road and laugh, but something told me that it wouldn't last. Had to switch up, look at things different, see the bigger picture. Those were the days, hard work forever pays. Now I see you in a better place. See you in a better place. Ah, uh, how can we not talk about family when family's all that we got? Everything I would do, you were standing there by my side. And now you gon' be with me for the last ride. Without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. See you again. We've come a long way, a long way. From where we began. You know we started. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. I'll tell you. When I see you. Go 
find your way in the vibe is feeling stronger with small turn to a friendship a friendship turn to a bond and that bond will never be broken the love will never get lost and when brotherhood come first then the line will never be crossed established it on our own when that line had to be drawn and that line is what we reach so remember me when i'm gone can we not talk about family when family's all that we got? Everything I went through, you were standing there by my side. And now you're gonna be with me for the last ride. Let the light guide your way. Yeah. Hold every memory as you go. And every road you you my friend and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again we've come a long way from where we began